think about the Ohio River, that's a whole lot of water. It's a whole lot of species. You can't imagine what you might shock up in there. Now today we're out here with a shocking boat. People have never seen one of these, it's an electro fishing boat. And they use these to sample fish populations. What might we see today? We should see some of your sport fish, like you said, striper, sauger, maybe some bass. But we're also going to see a lot of the cool river fish that most people don't actually get to see most of the time, like buffalo, common carp, carp suckers, red horse. There's some weird stuff all out here. All kinds of stuff, yeah. That people, you know, may not see because they don't catch them necessarily. Uh, let's just see how many species we can get today and give people an idea of what kind of critters are in here besides the ones you obviously go fishing for. Sounds good. All right. That's our challenge for the day, multi-species day with the electro-fishing worm. Oh, All right, Sarah, as I look in here, seems like every time I come up here, I catch a drum. We got a couple drum here. This is a drum, one of the most common caught species, probably. They'll, they'll hit any kind of live bait. They'll wear you out. Now, there's one species down. That's quillback. Kind of looks like a river carp sucker, but that fin on there, the first fin there on the dorsal, or the first ray on the dorsal fin is a lot higher. It almost comes back to the to the back of the dorsal fin. That's a good characteristic for how to... You can see why they call him a quillback. Quillback. Somewhere in here, we've got a smallmouth. You see those very often? The Ohio River's definitely got a lot more sport fish in it than some of the other larger rivers. we got some catfish. Looks like channel cats. Now tell us, Sarah, the difference between a channel cat and a blue cat. So. Ah, the channel cat is... A little bit darker in color. That blue cat will be a dark, or kind of dark blue on top and then light blue on the bottom. Now a lot of people catch these when they're younger and they got speckles on them. They think it's a different species, but they, they can come in all kinds of variations. Of, yep, of they sure can. Shades of gray and white and little black specks on them. All right, now we, I think we have some species of buffalo, possibly. Now how many species of buffalo? We There's use? three different buffalo. The big mouth, the small mouth, and the black. So that's a black buffalo. And here's a popular food item that's on the menu for a lot of these guys down here. What's that, Sarah? Gizzard shad. Now these guys, these shad can get pretty big, can't they? They really can. I think we've seen, I don't know, almost five pounders up there on the Illinois River. There's wow. a one lake up there, Swan Lake, and they just get huge. Now this is, Sarah? River carp sucker. It looks a lot like that quillback, but the, the dorsal fin doesn't have that long projection coming off the top. And then on the mouth, you can actually tell, if you look real close, there's a little nipple almost like projection there on its mouth, and the quillback won't have that. All right, Sarah, here's probably something you would rather not see, if we can get him up here. This is a big old fish. And a lot of people may not have seen one of these, but let's talk about what this guy is. Grass carp, he, uh, a lot of people like to try to put them in their ponds to control vegetation. Not always the best idea, though. They can't escape. They can escape. And they are a non-native species, and uh, we don't really want them out here, do we? No. Now, we knew we'd see one of these. Yeah. Very common, isn't it? Very common. Now that, I guess, is in the sucker family? Yes. And they get that bright color on their fins during the spawning time. So that is the, what do you call it, a river red horse? So there's a golden red horse, a river red horse, shorthead red horse, 
Um, and that's one of them. That's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw a couple of these, but we really, in all seriousness, didn't have a net big enough to get these. These will get huge. Very common river fish. What's that, Sarah? That one's just a short, short nose gar. Well, Sarah, there's another non-native species. Yep, common but carp. They've been here a long time, though. They have been here a long time. We're, we don't think so much of them around here because they're in every body of water. Would you call that a nuisance species or yeah. something like it? Yeah, something like it. Today we wanted to really go for the rough species, a lot of things that are misidentified by people, and, and talk about the most common species. Because we know the hybrids, we know the stripers. Here's a little red ear sunfish. Obviously there's bluegill in here. Smallmouth, largemouth, and long nose gar. I've had, I used to keep those in an aquarium. You gotta see the way they feed. You put some bait fish in and they just slash at them. It's pretty interesting to watch. Sarah, thanks for taking us out. What, what kind of things are you working on this year on the Ohio River? This summer we're, getting, we're trying to do a big catfish project um, with the new, all of the people are getting involved in the trophy catfish and then we have uh, you know, a big commercial fishery forum too. So we're just trying to get more data so we can make some informed decisions on what to do with our catfish regulations. So we're gonna be out trot lining for uh, blue cat channels and flatheads all summer long. And while we're doing that, we're also gonna be doing some gill netting trying to get Asian carp and some of the native fish as well to see if we can see any trends as far as with increasing abundance of silver carp, uh, decreasing any of our native fish uh, condition and abundance as well. So uh, that's pretty much how our summer's gonna go. Well, we're still gonna be looking at the uh, lake sturgeon and stuff down in the Cumberland. Oh, We've been going down and downloading those receivers each month. Uh, seen a lot of good movement already. Um, the ones that were put out um, near the mouth of the Laurel River have already gone past the Burnside Island. Wow. So, uh, they're, so they're moving moving, moving good already, and um, we're still working on uh, the bass spot uh, stocking projects in Markland and Meldaw. So we'll be doing that this fall and spring, and still working on some sauger stuff in the Kentucky River. That's why we're out there this summer, just trying to get a lot of good data to make sure we make the right kind of decisions.